if they expect me to walk away from Luton with nothing, I'll make very sure there's nothing to walk away from. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Oak Road Hatter podcast for what is a very different kind of episode today. We are grading the 12 summer signings from the impact they've made so far and how far we see them going this season. To help me out, of course, I have the dreaded duo of Jamie Castle and Kieran Robertson. Jamie, how are you getting on? Why are we dreaded? Like, why did we deserve that tag? Did you chat so much rubbish on <laughs> socials? Uh, That's why says says the uh, the the elusive Billy Mully on socials. He he sort of goes under the radar. <laughs> He's that Homer Simpson going back into the uh, into the bush gif. Um, but no, I mean I was good until I was offended by you, mate. Thank you very much. Akira, <laughs> <laughs> now you, mate. Yeah, man, not bad. I mean, been better than Jamie. It doesn't take much to offending these days but for me it's all right I'm, I'm pretty chill do you know what I mean so yeah living a dream excited to bring us some international break content that's for sure and we can catch some pelters this week with this episode oh, of course yeah. we are grading the 12 summer signings of what we've seen so far and the kind of impact we expect them to make this season um the, the three I guess parts of the criteria here was value for money if there was a fee involved the impact they've made up until this point and the impact we think they can they can go on to make up until the end of the season. So we're going to go in order and we're pretty sure this was the order of when they were either bought or added to the squad. So that means number one, we're starting with Chio Ogbene. Jamie, where would you place him on a scale of A to E? This one is uh, quite a funny one. I think if you'd have asked a lot of us fans a month ago, we'd probably give a different answer to what we'd um, what we've been given now. Um, but I mean, in my opinion, he's quickly becoming one of our key players, one of our most important players. Um, so if we're looking at again value for money um, and the impact that they've had so far, I can't look past him being an A. Really, um, great age. He's what twenty six, I think. So he's still got so much more to give. And yeah, if if he keeps keeps playing like that over the next couple of months, we probably might as well close the player of the season poll already. Um, so I mean, I, I think Kieran probably would agree with me here. For me, Cheer Rob Benny, A. I am going to also slide in and say Cheer Rob Benny, A as well. Completely agree. Um, as far as it goes, fine. Eight nine games into the season, signing of the season so far, so far. But that's the whole point. I'd slide him straight into A category, exactly the same reasons that Jamie said. We got him for free. It's an incredible value for money already for an Irish international. He's actually surpassed my expectations already so far. And is one of those, it's the first name on the team sheet already. So for me, Bill, no brainer, slide him up, it's an A. I think that's possibly the easiest start that we could have had. Um I don't think I can go against any of your your rationales there. It is certainly in the A category there. That leads us nicely on to our second player, and that was Mads Anderson, who, um, of course, was our highest transfer fee at the time uh, when we signed him. I'll, I'll swap it around. Kieran, where would you place Mads Anderson? So if this was at the start of the season, it was quite dubious. And I might have gone D for dubious. Um, but based on recent performances, I'd actually slide him up as far as C. 
I'm still a little bit wary. I understand he's getting to know the level. I understand his game has a long way to go, but that's only because I don't think he's played at a level, to be honest. And that's fine. Until now, obviously, he had no Premier League games. He'd only had one full season at Championship level. But for me, see, so far, value for money. Obviously, he was a record fee at the time, but I think he's got a long way to go throughout his entire Luton career to come. So for me, see. And Jamie, what we were speaking about Anderson the other day. We were trying to compile our starting 11 if injuries uh, were eradicated pretty much. And we both said Anderson is very, very close to, you know, becoming a player that you want in your starting 11 week in, week out. Um, so from what you've seen so far, from the potential he has shown, from how quickly he's progressing, would you agree with C or would you make a case for something else? Yeah, I'd probably. I mean, whilst Kieran was was talking, I was sort of thinking a, a, a bit sort of recent performances, and I thought Everton away he was fantastic. Okay, he only played in this in the second half, but he he kept Calvert Lewin quiet for for the entire half pretty much. Um, and whilst three million pound, which is what was, what we think the fee is around that mark for us, what that is quite a lot of money in t- in terms of historically, but in the grand scheme of things, it's it's next to nothing for again. A good athletic central defender. Is it of a good age? Um, and yeah, I think he's pushing Lockyer all the way. So I'm probably leaning more towards towards B, um, especially if if you add in the impact that he could have for the rest of the season. Um, I I wouldn't be surprised if if come the end of the season, Anderson is starting week in week out. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna push him towards B. So I'll give I'll give you the the final say, Billy. That's the first time I've been I've been given the authority to to make the final vote. Yeah, it's a difficult one. Um, if there was a category in between, he'd go straight in there, and I think we could all agree with that. But I'm I'm going to go for C. I'm going to go for for a C plus probably because he is edging into that B category. But yeah, I think there's definitely potential for for him to become an integral member of that starting eleven. Um, and he's shown positive glimpses so far, considering he was playing League One football last season. Next, we have Tahith Chong. Again, a um, sizable enough chunk of our of our um, summer budget was spent on, on Chong. Um, I think it was around the four to five million pound mark, which again surpassed our, um, our, our transfer record. It was quite close, actually, between um, him and Anderson. I'll come to you, Jamie. Where would you place Tahith Chong in this list? This is where it starts to get a bit more difficult because we've got got two markers now in terms of Chair and Anderson, and you, you will always sort of, going forward we're going to we're going to use those as to sort of better or worse. Um, Chong, uh, I think obviously he started the season in terms of first few games was we'll start starting eleven, and I, I was fairly impressed. I think he you can tell he still still needs to learn a, learn a few things tactically and. And just sort of gain gain that 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 football brain a bit more, but he's dropped. He's since dropped out the side. She, as you say, for us a lot of money again. Um, and I'm looking at Anderson, and I probably would rank him below Anderson slightly in terms of the impact. So that that for me thinks well is he is he a D, but in that that seems a bit harsh. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna. Give him a C purely because I think I've shown glim- uh, he, he's shown glimpses in the last two games where, where he's come on as a sub. He, he, he's shown me enough that actually I think he, he can impact the squad really well going forwards, especially in one of those sort of wide forward roles if, if we stick with the, the 5 2 3. So stick him alongside Anderson for me. C. Kieran, are you in agreement with Jamie there? I think this one's more sort of that third strand, right? Is more you look into the future with Chong because he's had a slow start compared to a lot of our other signings. I mean, four million, it's a tough one to sort of dissect in terms of is that too little, is that too much? Because ex United Wonder Kid, he's come out of an academy and any player that's coming out of a Premier League academy, obviously fine, they'd be they've been released from said academy. But you know there's talent there, otherwise they wouldn't be an ex-Man United youngster, right? And we'll cross that bridge with Mengi, I'm sure, later in the video. But I think for me, I would slip Chong into C as well, only because there's glimpses and there's proof, I think, so far that, yes, he's been distant so far this season. 
I think where he's been deployed either at right side or he's been deployed in midfield. Like Jamie said, there's a lot for him that he needs to do to grow into this Luton side. But we spent the money on him. I think Rob does trust him and Rob is ready to sort of rely on him further forward. It's just figuring out how to get the best out of him, both for him and for us, I think. And once we do, we've seen sort of the compilations like we were posting through the summer about him. He's got those glimpses of quality. He's got that talent. There's no doubt in my mind that he can become that sort of player that Obene has already become quite quickly. So I'm going to slip him into C purely for more future proof in myself if we were to redo this come the end of the season. Yeah, again, it's um, quite straightforward this one. I think there is a lot more to come from Chung. I think he has shown positive glimpses, but I don't think he's done anything as of yet to, to warrant being placed in the upper levels of this list. So I will whack him there. Next to Anderson on C. That brings us to what was the fourth summer signing, marvellous Nakamba, after what was such an impressive loan stint that you know played such a pivotal role in us achieving promotion to the Premier League. We managed to sign him on a permanent deal, and he's you know, again become that that integral player in the starting eleven that, that we've been crying out for. So Kieran. Where would you place Marvellous? It's for me, I want to try and eliminate sort of any sentimental value because it would be so easy for me to go, well, obviously, he's an A, like he's the best thing since sliced bread because, but that was him in the championship, right? In the Prem so far, it's he had an interesting start, it was a little bit ropey, like it's not to say that he did anything wrong, it was just more okay, you almost like you're playing to the occasion rather than knowing your role in a sense. Um, whenever he's been able to be partnered with a, in a two, so whether it's Pelly, whether it's Lokonga, he looks a lot more assured. And I think that is where he's going to be at his best in the league this season. Like in the championship, we were playing almost a 3 1 4 2. And obviously, he was the one there. And you can get away with that in the championship and be a bit more expansive. But I think, obviously, it goes without saying our role in the Premier League this season is survival. We can't have that risk of him just being that one. And being overrun. So when he plays in the two, I'm assured, and he has looked really good. When he's played as a one, it's not ideal. Um, obviously, value for money, less than four million. We're absolutely laughing. Cheers, Villa. Love you. Thanks a lot. Um, future, I think he does blossom and I think he does get better and he becomes one of those sort of seasoned pros in our team. But like I said, that needs that comfortable and confident midfield partner. And when it's chopping and changing, whether it's Pelly or Lukonga or whoever's just not injured that week, it's less than ideal. Um, I want to say B, but I'm kind of also leaning towards C for that reason. Same again with Chong, just because I feel like good so far. I want to see a little bit more though. Wow. Jamie, what about you? Are you taking it up to a B or are you dropping that down to a C? I was thinking at least B, to be honest. Um, I think Kieran's completely right in terms of in terms of starting a bit slow. Um, but I think since then he's he's been really assured he's up there in terms of one of the, one of the most tackles in the league. Um and he's he's a ninety minute man, he's consistent. I think he, he the, the last few games he's he's been an eight out of ten at, at, at worst. Um so I think C was way too harsh. I think for me, he's probably, again, he's a, a bit like Mads where he was sort of in between a B and a C. I think Miles probably in between an A and a B. So, um, yeah, I think for me, I'd, I'd lean towards an A personally. I think in terms of, what, what especially in that two, um, what, what what he's given. And, and you don't statistically be one of the best tacklers in the league after eight games if you're if you're not not a C or at least a B plus. Um so I'm going to go with an A, but I'll, I'll let you decide, Bill. You've made my job very easy. Um, and it sort of aligns with where I was going anyway. I was going to go right bang in the middle with B. Um, yeah, I think I think there was always this in- expectation that because he'd done so well for us and he was a massive part of why we got promotion, when he signed again, he was just going to adapt to, to Premier League football seamlessly. But of course, he hadn't had too much... Uh, recent experience in the Premier League and of course playing in a different side with different expectations than Villa would have had um, I thought it was, it was a tough ask for him to go and be that main man in the midfield but 
he's got better game on game. Um, I think you look at that Brighton game, he, he struggled. He struggled in possession and out of possession, but he's, he's improved at both um, as the season's gone on. And again, he's, he's cemented himself as one of our most important players, one of the first names on the team sheet. And regardless of who he's partnered next, he still puts in a, a strong enough performance each week. So for that reason, I'm going to go for a B, but I can understand I can understand Jamie having him pushing for that A level. Let's go to the next signing, and it was the first of our loan signings. That is Issa Kabore. Of course, he spent last season on loan at Marseille. We got him from Man City on a season long loan deal. Kieran, Issa Kabore so far. Um the impact he could potentially have down the line, where would you place him on this scale A to E? Considering where he's at in his career at the moment, I want to say B, because obviously I was incredibly vocal on the Exeter game about his performance and how shocking it was. But if you eliminate that, I don't remember an occasion where he's really put a foot wrong, to be quite honest. And the thing is, is, we used to obviously Cody Drame of last season, who's used to lower league football and played incredibly well and then decided he didn't want to come back. So that's fine. You now bring in Kabore, who, for context, is a city youngster. So he's part of that city group who their, well, their youth academy is a world established now at this point. You then add in the context he spent a full season in Marseille last year playing European football. The lad's not even 20 yet. Like there's so much scope for him to grow as a footballer and the fact that we've been chosen as that team suggests he's in the right place. There's a few things that he needs to improve on. His sort of end product in terms of crossing, even sometimes just having a shot, like flashing it across goal. But the thing is, those things are going to come. That's why he's on loan with us. That's why we've signed him because he's at that level in his development. And a lot of people are quite quick to be like, oh, is it a wasted loan space? Did we really need him? Yes, we really did need him. No, it's not a waste of a loan space. But also just be aware that the kid is 19 years of age playing in the biggest league in world football now on a big pedestal in a team that's trying to fight for survival. And quite if you sort of actually take a minute to add context in, I think he's done incredibly well so far. I wouldn't put him in A because there's nothing that he's done that's like made me feel starstruck to be quite honest, but in terms of like the roles and responsibilities we probably want from him, B is probably bang on in terms of where to put him for now. Kieran, does your opinion change if I tell you he's not 19, he's 22? Um, no, no, it doesn't actually, to be quite honest. It actually makes fuck all difference to my opinion <laughs> because okay. I know that someone's going to come for me and say, oh my God, you got his age wrong. Don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, um, Kieran's on B. Are you on that level? It's weird because I, I, I sort of fully agree with Kieran's narrative, apart from the age, obviously. Um, I, I, I agree with what you're saying in terms of um, age and loan signing. And I think he started well. And I think, again, it almost flipped with Chio, where if, if I'd been asked this a month ago, my answer would probably be different. Um, but I think he's really struggled of late. Um, I think... Burnley at home and obviously Kieran you weren't there so appreciate you didn't see that performance as, as a whole but I think Burnley at home he really struggled against who was it Taylor and, and Amdouni down that left hand side um, he was really put under a lot of pressure um, and hence why he probably lost his place against Spurs right um, so I'd probably actually personally push him down more towards a C um, I think he certainly can move up towards a B and an A come, come the end of the season Um but I think for where we are right now and the competition he has for a place with even putting Chio there at right wing back and now if we doubt he can play there, there's a chance that he might not fully um play a lot of the season. So for me, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with a C. A C plus, but a C. Yeah, it's difficult to argue with that. I don't have much else to add than, than what Jamie said there. Um I think as you mentioned, if we would have done this a month ago, I think it'd be B pushing A, uh, but he has defensively struggled uh, last couple of weeks. I still think there's an incredibly high ceiling and I think he can be really, really important for us moving on. Um, but yeah, I think the last few performances haven't been 
at the same level as, as maybe the ones against Fulham, um, against Wolves, I think as well. He, he performed well. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go see. Uh, I've got nothing else to change there. That brings us on to Ryan Giles, who is now again our, our um, the, the most amount of money we paid for a player. So he broke the transfer record. Um, a player who was absolutely superb in the championship last season. Um, Jamie, Ryan Giles, where would you place him on this tier list? Yeah, it's um, it's not like it's not like me to be harsh on a player, but I think he's really struggled defensively this season. Um, he obviously was tried tried to play through it to start with, um, but I think that there's a reason why he's dropped out the side completely at the minute, and why Alfie Doughty has has, has come on and played both left and right. Um, yeah, it's, it is a lot of money to spend, and I truly believe he can by the end by the end of his career at Luton be sort of an A and a B signing but in terms of where we are right now um, and the fact he's lost his place and even not not even being sort of thrown on as a sub like you've got obviously different players but Berry and Woodrow coming on ahead of him and then they, they shift Ogbené to, to, to right rather than Doughty to the right and Giles on the left I think that there's a reason why Edwards doesn't fully trust him defensively yet um, so I think with all the context of money and performances, I think I'm going to have to, for the time being, put him down as a D. Um, but as I say, I, I think in good time, um, I, I do have full faith in his abilities to to, to go up the rankings. But in terms of w- what I've seen and, and the information I've got in front of me, I think, yeah, for, for, for now, he's a D. Kieran, are you also going to place Giles in D. Can you make an argument for him to, to be any higher? This is probably the one signing that's actually going to be the biggest talking point, I think, for me, is there's a lot of sort of different opinions. Um, Jamie's pretty much summed it up to a T there. Like, he really has struggled so far this season and it's tough when then your competition's Alfie Doughty and he's absolutely excelling now at left-back, which we all knew he was capable of. Like, even when we signed him, there was a lot of question marks of not necessarily did we need a left wing back. It was more, did we need to spend five million on a new left back that obviously to the view of the manager, if you're spending that much money on a position, nine times out of ten, he's in there in his eyes anyway, better than the option we've got, which was strange to us. And so far, it looks like we were right on that one doubt he was the better option. Obviously, Doughty offers versatility. And in an ideal world, you want to see Giles and Doughty play together. So far, on the other hand, Giles hasn't done much to help his case. Um, I'm going to stick nice and easy. I'm going to go with D. Um, There's nothing sort of catastrophic, again, that's led to him just being dropped out of the team, like a Kabore mistake the other day. It's more just the fact that he just generally hasn't been up to standard yet and that's fine like that might be tactically you go from an attacking Carrick Middlesbrough side and now you're coming to a survival loot inside like it's a it's a different kettle of fish and now you're up a division as well not to mention I can understand why it'd be tough um and obviously I can't speak for Rob I can't speak for the team I can't speak for Giles himself but I know they probably hold him to a higher standard and he probably holds himself to a higher standard as well so I'm going to say D. However, I do believe that come the end of the season, he'll have had a much bigger influence. And hopefully if we come to repeat this video at the end of the season, we'll be talking about him in a much more positive light. Yeah, Giles is an interesting case. And and with you both putting him in D, I don't feel like I can put him anywhere else. I would be pushing for, you know, a C minus. Um, But ultimately, as Jamie and Kieran both alluded to, he has struggled defensively admittedly against very, very good opposition when he has played. So it, it's not, you know, it's not a catastrophe by by any stretch. But I also don't think he has been fairly good going forward. Um, we you know he grow, he's grown a reputation in the Championship of being a very good crosser of the ball. Um, going up to, to the Premier League, it was always going to take, um, it was going to take a while for him to, to adapt to things. You think in the Championship, he was, getting a lot more opportunities to, to deliver whereas in in the higher division 
he's not getting as many opportunities to to cross the ball and you know I think that that's a massive massive part of his game and we, we can't necessarily cater for that at the moment um I still think I think he could be in this 5-2-3 uh, formation I think the left wing position might be ideal for him getting further up the pitch with more attacking responsibility with more width um yeah I think that could be ideal for him um and as Kieran said going from Middlesbrough playing free-flowing attacking football to the Premier League with Luton where those first few games that he started were, were very much counter-attacking and, and backs against the wall. So, yeah, I think we're going to have to go for D, but I still have very, very high hopes for, for Ryan Giles. I think he's going to, I think he's going to at least double his worth within this season and, and hopefully he gets kicking on after this international break. We're going to head into a short break now. And when we come back, we've got the remaining six players to give our thoughts on. We are back for part two of today's episode where we are grading each of Luton's 12 signings during the summer transfer window. We move swiftly on to signing number seven. That is, of course, Thomas Kaminsky. Um, if you read the reports, if you kept close tabs to what was happening during the summer, it seemed a rather strange situation when it came to the goalkeeping department. Luton um, had many targets on their radar, as reports would suggest. Finally landed on one of the earlier targets, which was Blackburn Rovers goalkeeper Thomas Kaminsky who has since emerged as Luton's number one in the Premier League. Kieran, what have you made of Kaminsky so far and, and what tier of this would you put him in? I think Kaminsky has been a clear upgrade from last season. But then the tough thing from last season, how to compare, right, is you had Horvath, who basically stood in gold drinking his water for 90 minutes because he had absolutely nothing to do. And then you now have Kaminsky, who has absolutely everything, balls, lampposts, bricks, anything that gets thrown at the boy, he's got to try and flap at it, right? So it's it's a lot easier to judge Kaminsky's performances, but also he commands his box better. He actually communicates with his defence. He seems a lot more confident, but they're things that you would need a Premier League keeper to have, quite honestly, at the bare minimum. But the fact that he has them is a good sign considering our track record with goalkeepers, it's not phenomenal. Like, yeah, you've had the odd ones that have snuck through, but not ideal, really. So, so far, so good. I mean, it would be over the top if I went straight in and went A. But again, like, there are a few times, like, if even look at the Tottenham game, could have been 3 nil down in 10 minutes and he made two really big saves. So, I think, on top of that... I think B is sensible because he has been a world above. And I think if we'd have ended up with Krul and Begovic, I'm actually internally crying at the thought of what our goals conceded would be like if Kaminsky wasn't our number one. So slide that into B tier for me, please. Jamie, you're going to make it nice and easy for me. Are you going to allow me just to put it in B and move on? Yeah, I think B, I think slightly different narrative. I think he had a tough start. I think there's a couple of mistakes he made. West Ham, the one that like, springs to mind straight away and, and Fulham probably a bit harsher to call it a mistake. But um, yeah, still still could have done better. Um, I don't think it's a clear upgrade in Horvath. Um, I think he, he, he he's not great. I think I think the, the, the difference is, is probably lower than Kieran's made out. Um, but I think he's improving game by game at the minute. I think, yeah, the Spurs game, two fantastic saves. That that one from Richarlison with his left leg and then the, the other one from, from Kudoseski down to his right just to, to sort of palm it past the post um, were two huge saves for us at, at the time and, and kept us in it for, for I guess, all the game pretty much. Um, so, yeah, I, I think for me, probably the B-minus side of B, um, but I think for the fee, what was it, around two million? So it, it, again, it's a, it's a fairly modest fee. Um, 
So for for that value, um, he's experienced. I mean, he's thirty, but obviously keepers ha- have a lot longer in their careers. So he's certainly still got got a while to go. Um, so yeah, I I would slot him in at B as well. Thank you, fellas, for making that quite easy for me. Nothing else to add from me. Um, yeah, he has been a good signing so far, and I think there is more to come. Let's go on to Ross Barkley, who t- turned out to be signing number eight. A in addition to the squad that caught many of us Luton fans by surprise, hasn't had too much game time as of yet, but he still has, has um, played several minutes. Kieran, where would you place Barkley? I mean, he's played what two games? Two, one, two, two. Probably Chelsea three, West Ham, three maybe. He always not played. Yeah, I'm not sure. But yeah, yeah. I mean, it's much. just Chelsea. Chelsea West Ham. Um, Chelsea, he was just not there, but was anyone, to be fair. So fine, let him off. Um, West Ham, I think he played really well, actually. And when he got the ball, always wanted to do something with it. Um, always looking for the next pass. And I think he offers that something in midfield we just haven't had for years. Um, and obviously something that we don't have being at the top level. Um the only concern with Barkley is the injury record. That's been his concern everywhere he's gone. Hopefully, now that he's coming back, I think that might also have been sort of the change in formation. Like we've been 5 2 3 for a little while. Do we then switch it back when Barkley comes back in and we still have the double pivot and sit Barkley further forward? Who knows? But I think we. I'm going to put him in D. And the only reason I'm putting him there is just because. I just think we haven't seen what he's actually capable of. We've only really got two case studies so far and there's not exactly much to offer. But there'll be a couple of times this season where he shows glimpses of brilliance, glimpses of his talent and show exactly why we've got him in. So, D. But like I said, just based off lack of evidence, quite frankly. Jamie, are you in agreement? Would you slot him into D or would you make a case for him going any higher? It's one of those marginal cases for me. Um, yeah, between C and D, so not not miles out. Um, I think he's shown at times his his football brain. I think we saw it in the first what thirty seconds at Stamford Bridge, where he just won a free kick in in their half. Um, and I think we'll we'll see a lot more of that this season. Um, I would probably lean marginally towards C, um, purely because free transfer. Um, no idea the wages, but it would have to have worked for for us to bring him in. So almost sort of disregarding the wage point. Um, I think the fact that it's a free transfer and the experience that he adds to us, I think we we also have to take into account the off the pitch um, side of things and what he adds. Um, so I think for all of those reasons, I'd probably push him up up one to see. Um, but yeah, it'd be really inter- it'd be really interesting to see what happens going forward in terms of tactical setup and where and where he fits in. Yeah, when looking back at the criteria we set at the very start, we had value for money, the impact they've made so far and the impact down the line. Um, Looking at that, I think value for money and the impact down the line, that pushes me towards C, whereas the impact so far would would lead me to D. So on that basis, two beats one. So I will go for Ross Barkley. I will go for C. Then we get on to Jacob Brown, who I was really, really impressed with at the start of the season. Um, he paved his way into the starting eleven and has been a regular feature ever since. Start with you, Jamie. Where will you put Jacob Brown? Yeah, his substitute appearances has obviously forced Edwards to, to to give him a chance in, in the side. So I think you have to rate his his early se- his sort of really early season performances as, as really good. Um, he came on and looked lively, um, and then got his first start at Fulham, I believe, um, and hit the post. So who knows if he scores that, then it could be a different different story as well and entirely. I think if if he, if he scores that, you're probably pushing up towards an A. Um, but I think his performances have tapered off slightly the last couple of games, especially the last two home games with Burnley and Spurs. I think he he works hard. There's no doubt in his, his hard work at all. He works really hard off the ball and and I think he's going to add so much to us going forwards. 
but I think in terms of his output going for, going forward in, a, in an attacking sense, he, there is definitely room for improvement. And I think Morris needs a bit more help up top in terms of those wide forwards. And I think if you compare him to Ogbené, I think it, you, you cannot put him in that same bracket. Um, so I think for that reason, I think he's got to be a B. I think C, C's, C's too low. So yeah, B for me, for Brown. Kieran, are you also in agreement that Jacob Brown should be placed in B? I'd take a B, personally. I think his work rate is unmatched. It adds that sort of new level to the side. Not to say that our team's ever not been hard workers, right? But in the Prem, you almost have to stand out for your work rate and show what you're worth. And I think his couple of substitute appearances at the start of the season showed, right, this guy is more than capable it's just now, rather than trying to get it out of him in 10, 15 minutes, Rob's like, OK, let's see what you've got in 75, 80, 90 minutes. And like you said, Jamie, I think the one key thing that is missing is output. But that's spread across the whole team at the moment is our output just isn't high enough if we're wanting to survive. But he'll know that. We all know that. Like I, It's like stating the obvious, right? It's water wet. Yes, but fine. So... Brown fits into that category of just adding that little bit of extra work rate once he does and that output increases. Finished product for me, job done. So B, I'm more excited for his future than I am for a sort of present day Jacob Brown. That makes the job very easy for me. I'll slide him in B. I've been really, really impressed and I do think performance levels have dropped over the last couple of game weeks, as, as Jamie said. But I think out of possession, when you look at, at how much ground he covers, um, his anticipation as well, he wins, um, well, he makes a lot of interceptions, he makes a lot of tackles. Um, I think his defensive work is invaluable. Um, but yeah, if he can start scoring goals, start creating more chances, I think we can start pl- uh, putting him alongside Ogbené at the top of the list. That leads us to the 10th signing of the summer. That is Mr. Tim Krull, who has accumulated a load of experience in the Premier League. Hasn't hasn't had an opportunity in the Premier League so far, but has played both cup games, 3-2 win against Gillingham, and then the disappointing defeat at Exeter. Kieran, you saw him at Exeter. What have you made from for, of him so far and where would you place him? I mean, generally speaking, like a minus the goal, where it, whether it was miscommunication or not, he didn't really put a foot wrong at Exeter. I, he's he's a ball playing keeper, so it offers us something different. Like Kaminsky can have the ball to, to feet necessarily, but I think he gets the ball to feet and up it goes. Whereas Krull looks a lot more comfortable in terms of playing under pressure as a ball playing keeper, which gives us sort of further opportunity perhaps maybe next season when we can be a little bit more expansive or if Rob wants to change it up this season, he's got that option. Like Experience speaks for itself. He knew he was coming in as number two. We knew he was coming in as number two. Like You can't really ask for too much in that sense. Um, But from what we've seen of him, if he was thrown in tomorrow and it was a case of, yeah, you've got to play now for the rest of the season, I think I would be confident in Tim Krul sort of having the same level of output as Kaminsky. He carries, like I said, carries himself well, good shot stopper, commands his box, communicates really, really well. I can't put him, can't, there's no faults. And like you said, our case study is quite small. I'm going to go C personally, because again, free transfer, can't go wrong. Jamie, are we adding yet another player into that C bracket? Yeah, I think so. I think D would be too harsh. I think contrary to what Kieran said, I think his on pitch performances haven't been very good. Um, I think Gillingham in the cup in particular, he, he made a, made a few mistakes, and there was a lot a lot of reports for fans in terms of how how shaky he seemed um, on on the ball and and in terms of his shot stopping. But I do think he he gives us so much off the pitch. I mean, you've seen the videos where I think was it Morris's penalty um, against Wolves. You can see him in the dugout going going berserk in terms of us getting that point, and I think he adds so much to our squad. Um, so I think, yeah, free transfer, great signing in terms of the, the, the squad picture. I think he's definitely a drop-off on, on Kaminsky. So I'd be less assured if 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 um, he was to get injured and Krull had to, had to start 
But I think with a run of games, he would probably regain his confidence. So, yeah, in good time, he probably could reach that level. But, um, yeah, for now, limited information. But, yeah, C. I can't disagree. So, yes, let's put him in C. Um, I agree. Um, and I think Kieran's obviously got one perspective given he saw the Exeter game. I've got the other considering I saw the Gillingham game where he did look shaky and he wasn't as comfortable on the ball as, as Kieran was suggesting he was at Exeter. Um, but yeah, you can't deny the invaluable experience he brings off the pitch. And, you know, it's a game of fine margins. This season is all about fine margins and having somebody like him in your camp will be massive. That is for sure. Let us go into the penultimate player of this list, and that is Tiedemengi. Mengi. So I'm uh, from Manchester United, but I think he actually arrived as a free agent um, looking at a uh, uh, post he put up. It looked like he terminated his contract at Manchester United before signing. I don't know um, the full intricacies of things, but it appears he signed as a free agent. Kieran, talk us through Tied and Mengi um, and where you'd place him in this tier. To be fair, it's only been the last couple of games where he's come in and sort of been able to show his worth. And again, like the consensus for me is so far so good. Like it feels like ever since the Exeter pod where I said that he has a baggy touch, he has listened to that and he's gone, Do you know what? But this guy, man, that is not true. Because ever since that day, I don't think he's put a foot wrong. He played really well at Everton. Like the consensus across the board is that he's been playing really well ever since. And I think for me, the key thing here again is the future prospects. He has by far the highest ceiling of all of our signings this season, without a doubt. He was captain of the United under 21s. He believes in himself. Um, any of you that watched the video sort of of him, that sort of move from United to Luton. Um, He's a big character, believes in himself and backs himself to succeed at the top of the game. And the thing is, is we've been quite good at sort of converting these characters like Barkley, who have talent, but also have supposed attitude problems, but then flip the script a little bit and take a player who has talent, but also backs himself to be even better and succeed and be the best. They're the sorts of characters we want to be building teams around and keeping around the club as long as possible. So, like I said, for me, high ceiling. And I'm going to rank him up at, I'm going to say C+, plus because I think B would be me jumping the gun quite quickly. Um, but I'm going to say a very high C+, plus on the basis of, I think, his future, not just with Luton, but in general, is really bright. And Jamie, before you give your answer, please, please take away that, that um, effort he had <laughs> against Spurs at the weekend because as soon as that happened at the final whistle and probably about half an hour afterwards, that's all that that Jamie could speak about. His vocab was limited to what was he doing? <laughs> um, so, Jamie, where were you at, Mengi? Yeah, I mean, if we take away that that um, <laughs> moment of madness in the 95th minute from, from Tieden, I think if we look at 2020 as a whole, I think the the one area we've had the the best success in our centre half free agents or free free transfers and there's no there's no I would guess guarantee he was he was a free agent but it was free or nominal fee and if you look back we've got Lockyer Burke I think someone 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 mentioned on Twitter that Reese Burke actually is w- w- why isn't he in the picture of one of our best f- free transfers in in recent history I think he's he's been absolutely fantastic and. I think Mengi's in that mould of, of of a Burke and a Lockyer and a Bell who are all signed on 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 freeze. Um, I mean, he's twenty one, right, from a Manchester United academy. So the fact that we've got him with us is a fantastic signing. Um, and yeah, again, he's played a bit bit part. He obviously played the full ninety or there or thereabouts uh, against Burnley, which was a bit of a negative performance as a whole in terms of the, in terms of the team. But he came through it okay. Um, Everton away, he, he came on in, in place of Lockyer, I think. Um, and yeah, he did, 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 did pretty well against against Beto, sort of on that, that, that white channel on the, on the back post, sort of, because it, 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 the, the, the defence was, was bombarded quite a lot in, in that last 
last 15 minutes and I think he came through it okay. Um, so for me, I would actually push him up towards a B minus personally in terms of if you look at those, those three categories, value for money and, and looking ahead for the rest of the season. I think there's a, there's a chance that if, if Burke and or Osho both stay out injured or go, get injured or don't fit, get come back fully fit, there's a chance he can get, get some decent minutes and I think he can impact. Um, so I would push him over that border towards B, um, a B minus, but, but a B. I am going to put him in B. That's because I, I'd have him in between B and A. Um, looking at our categories, looking at value for money, obviously it was either nominal or a free transfer uh, impact down the line. What Kieran alluded to, how high his ceiling is. Um, of course, a former captain of Manchester United's under 21s, a player that seemingly transitioned to Premier League football fairly well for his age and for for the situations that he's walked in. Um, I think he's made somewhat of an impact already. And I think down the line, um, with 30 games still to go in this Premier League campaign and two right-sided centre-backs that can't seem to play too much football without getting injured, I think Mengi can potentially become a starting eleven player um, for an extended period of games if that, that situation was to arise. Um, but yeah, I think the, the ceiling is incredibly high with Mengi. I put him for now in B, but I do think there's there's good potential that we could be um, placing him on a level next to Ogbené in the not so distant future. That all leads to the last one, and it's a real frustrating one for us Luton fans because he has already picked up an injury, and he will be out for a while. That is, of course, Sambi Lokonga, joined on deadline day from Arsenal. Uh, a player that I didn't really think was in our within our grasp but we managed to secure his signing it was exciting but then it all came crashing down with a with a fairly lengthy injury Kieran where's your head at for for Lokonga I was absolutely singing this boy's praises after Fulham away because I just think him and the Camber was like this almost match made in heaven double pivot and I was dreaming of the season ahead, thinking, oh my God, if I see Lokonga playing his passes for 38 games, I'm going to combust with happiness. Because it was just everything that I felt like we needed and everything that I wanted, and it was great. And then he went and got injured. And I was like, ah, there's the Lokonga that Arsenal fans know and love. And it's worried me a little bit. Um I think it sort of highlighted our desperate need now almost for a midfielder in January. Um, Pelly and the camber there, it's fine. But that's as far as I'd say. It's fine. Um, and fine isn't going to cut survival for me. I think mean, Lukonga was that step above. Um, if you had a midfield free of Pelly, Sambi and the camber, that's a different story. But in terms of what we've seen, I, I did like what I see, but you've got to bear in mind that if we're only going to get that for a quarter of the season, it's not ideal really, is it? Um, I'm going to say a D plus or a C minus personally. Yeah. Jamie, what about you? Yeah, it's a frustrating one because there's, there's probably an alternate universe out there where he is what didn't get injured and he's now played four or five games and has looked excellent and we're probably talking about him being an A, right? In terms of what what he looked like he could give. Um and I agree that the Camber Lakonga double pivot was really exciting. So it's yeah, it's frustrating that we're talking about a lengthy injury for 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 him. Um probably not back till Jan Feb. Um I think D is probably slightly harsh, um, just because of you look look ahead in terms of value and obviously value being alone. Also, obviously the the outlay is, is is wages, um, and then looking ahead if he if he can get back fit, I think he could be massive in our in our one in for for survival in that 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 sort of double pivot. Um, so I was actually probably looking at more towards sort of like the the BC bracket. Um, so yeah, I mean I probably help Billy do his job and, and go see and then yeah just sort of end him there I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum I'm I'm 
might need some convincing out of it, but I'd go for D. Um, I, I think he's an incredible player. I think he had a very good game against Fulham. I also agree with Kieran from the glimpses he's shown. It's such an exciting prospect, and especially in that that double pivot with Nakamba. But the fact that he's what going to be out for at least another couple of months by by the sounds of things, the impact now is nothing, and the impact down the line is well. You're probably looking at the December and half a season pretty much is gone at that point. Um, so, yeah, I'd go for D. I think, again, value for money, of course. It was a loan sign and it's just the wages and we don't know how that split between us and Arsenal. But, yeah, I see the impact down the line and impact now was, was probably overbearing the the uh, value for, for money category. So I'd go for D and I don't know if this is just me being... Um, all Simon Cow head judge, but I'm going to put him alongside Ryan Giles in that D category. Well, that Before is... Before we finish, oh. Billy, breaking news, 16.01 on Wednesday, the 11th of October, we have announced Andros Townsend on a short-term contract until January. Um, oh. So, interesting one. Um, so, clearly, we can't talk about um impact so far but maybe we can add in add in a value for money and, a, and an impact going forward well that is that is some sky sports news kind of stuff jamie <laughs> breaking that um, well not really breaking it, <laughs> <Luton and Brogan. laughs> but yeah andros townsend signing um we, we've spoken about it already um when when of course it was mentioned that he had been training but but ultimately a player there again adds Premier League experience. Kieran, where would you place him? And we don't actually have his avatar down <laughs> down the bottom here, um, but we can speak about it at least. We can uh, we can um, we can say where we would put him. So, Kieran, what would you say with just the two categories? Um, I mean, it's a good signing for free, isn't it? Let's be fair. Like again, it's Premier League experience. I mean, Burnley wanted him in the summer and they end up getting someone else. So well, he obviously didn't sign for them. Um, if we're going to be playing 5-2-3, that makes her a very interesting signing and very interesting competition on that right side where we've been used to Jacob Brown. Now all of a sudden it goes, ah, let's throw you Andros Townsend. And we all know that he's got an absolute banger of a left foot, little wizard. Palisans absolutely loved him. Um, I think he still has something to offer in the league, albeit we were probably the only Premier League team that would have brought him in. Um, but I'm excited at the prospect of... I wouldn't... If he plays well, obviously, he's going to earn himself a contract to the end of the season. So I think it's in not just his best interest to play really well, to earn that contract, but in best interest for us to at least give him that chance. Jamie, what about you? Do you see this as, you know... Good bit of business, shrewd bit of business. Um, of course, free transfer given he is a free agent, but but wages wise, considering what he would be, considering what he can potentially add to this squad. Yeah, clearly he had to work for parties. That's what Edward, that's that's what he said in his conference, right? Um, so yeah, I mean, if, we, if we're looking at ratings, I think for me, firmly in that B category, I think value obviously on a free wages would have to work, and. Yeah, obviously talking about like the four two three one, whether we, whether we do that. I mean, if you have Benning on the left cutting in on his right and Townsend on the right cutting in on his left and you've got Eli off of Morris, I think that as a front four is really exciting. And I think, yeah, that added impact of the contract being until January, he's putting himself in the, in the shop window now, really. Obviously, ideally, he'll play himself in, into a contract at the end of the season with us, but who knows, he, he could be electric and, and maybe get a contract elsewhere. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's an exciting sign-in. I think, as we mentioned on, on the last pod, Bill, he adds a, a, us a lot. He adds a lot to us off the, off the pitch in terms of a good head on his shoulders. Um, so, I think it, it's, it's, it's a big signing for us and, um, and we filled that, that 25 spot now. Um, yeah, I think in, in that, that front three or, or, or front four, he can add a lot. So I, I would put him in a B if we had that avatar. Well, what a twist that episode took. Luton confirming the addition of Andros Townsend on a short-term deal. 
That concludes everything today. We have graded our 12 slash 13 new signings. We can't quite say it's summer anymore, but we can add uh, Andrus Townsend to the end of that list. Please, if you've liked this video, can you like and subscribe to Oak Road Hatter on YouTube and if listening on Spotify or any other platform, please remember to rate us, which of course is Oak Road Hatter. Until next week when we will be looking ahead to the Forest game, I get it right this time, um, it is goodbye from us.